Hello, Zero K fans, and welcome to Natalie the Dawn. I'm your host, Chad Fury 333 back from a bit of a hiatus because I moved. I moved house. So I have a new setup and a new place, and it's probably a bit quieter, actually. But anyway, I mean, hopefully my mic signal's fine, but the overall room, boy, is it ever quiet. Anyhow, I figure because there's been some stuff with FFA matches, people have been playing FFA matches recently, that I would cast one of these FFA matches. However, this is a rather long match, so get your popcorn. Anyway, I'm... Anyway, I'm going to... I just might as well start, there's no reason to delay, really. So, this is between Jasper, who's starting out going for Amphib, Raphael Pluck, who has not chosen their factory yet, and Dimefront, who is going for Amphib as well. On La Isla Bonita, which I'm not surprised they're going for Amphib on, because this is a map that Amphib really benefits from. All these ramps here are completely bot pathable, so Amphibs can just go through the water, out here, down, up this ramp here. That's a big deal. So, Jasper might... Jasper or Dimefront can do that. Raphael Pluck, going for spiders! Raphael wants to go entirely on the land. They don't want to go through the water at all. While Jasper and Dimefriend, of course, are. But both of them setting up pretty economical at first. Conscious from both Jasper and Dimefriend. Raphael going for a very... Is that a... Yep, very early Weaver. Makes a lot of sense. FFA is kind of tricky. And one of the reasons I haven't casted a lot of games for FFA is partly they haven't been done a whole lot. And partly because FFA is going to last a while. I actually asked Dimefriend for a game that was good. Apparently this is a game that's pretty good, has some action going on, or hopefully does. Because FFA can very easily devolve into people just sitting around building up defenses until someone gets a Disco Rave party or some other game-ending super weapon. At that point, you basically just have a big pork fest for a half an hour. And immediately, Airplane Plant being started up by Jasper. That's clearly not something they're going for directly. But... We're just going to be seeing a fair amount of construction for the next little while. Dimefriend setting up defenders at their natural expansion ramp. Jasper as well with a defender setting themselves up. And D Raffle Pluck setting up... I mean, with the Spiderbot factory, they have an easier time expanding over to this plateau right northwest of their base, as well as expanding to their natural expansion. Far fewer defenses, though. Raffle Pluck's expecting Jasper and Dimefriend to either fight each other or just do what they're doing right now, which is to defend. Build up, not worry too much about things. Right now, Jasper with 19 metal per second and 11 energy, as you can tell. Back to the old deluxe player list because there are three players and the standard player list does not handle FFA. It hasn't really been a thing that's been necessary. Teams are far more common as a game type, so FFA is deluxe player list for the time being. I don't know how often I'm going to do these, but when they are done for the time being, it will be deluxe player list, which I think works okay for FFA. I mean, I like the way that... Obviously, I love the spectator display. I like how it works for teams and for 1v1. It's just when you have FFA, you have an arbitrary number of teams. I think a list format works well for FFA. Anyhow. But all the players still just setting up. No real change. Jasper continuing to get anti-air. All the players are worried the others have air. Jasper's the only one who's actually started an air plant. And even then, nothing's going on. I'm actually going to speed this up a little bit. Because, I mean, it's pretty obvious. Okay, Dimefriend going for a little bit of harassment. So, watch that happening. Because first harassment of the game, five ducks going right into Rafalpluk's base. Rafalpluk, the least well-defended player. Dimefriend doesn't really know this, but wow, they guessed correctly. Unfortunately for Dimefriend, there is some defenses being built up, but really not much. Honestly, these ducks could just about march up. They need to regroup, and then from there, they can just go. Jasper has no idea any of this is going on. They're just building up happily. Setting up more defenses, more razors. Everyone still expects air. Particularly Jasper, which makes sense. They were going for air, but wow. Dimefriend getting a very good early start. Punishing Rafaelplug for being way too risky. However, at the same time, Rafaelplug did build up their entire base over to the north before going into their natural expansion. So, Rafaelplug should be in an okay position. Unfortunately, losing that worker, that's the, that's the problem. Oh, okay, and of course, chat is a thing in FFA. So Jasper might take the opening. They have scallops. Oh, how many scallops do they have? They have one. That's the only scallop in the game. They could help get rid of the ducks here, although... Now scallop archer and such. Oh! Oh, dying friend! That's what FFA is all... Like, FFA is all politics. That's the thing. 
Very clever time friend. Basically, yeah, that's cool. I, I hadn't even thought about that. But yeah, Jasper at this point doesn't even know what the others are doing. He Jasper knows that there's stuff going on. They know that someone's attacking someone. Okay, at this point, obviously, Raphael Bluck's being completely ridiculous. But that's actually interesting because Raphael Bluck complained originally about Dimefriend attacking them. And then Dimefriend's going, wait, 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 no, 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 no. You're attacking me. And Jasper has no way to know. Jasper hasn't scouted anything yet. They, they're they getting scouts. They're getting an airplane. They will see that there was a battle in front of, of Raphael Pluck's base. Nothing in front of Dimefriend's base. And also the Dimefriend, they're actually getting a bit ahead. They're not that far ahead for metal. They are quite ahead for energy, though. Holy crap, how, how many how, wind generators do they have? 24 right at the top. That's 37 energy from there. They're doing quite well. Raphael Pluck... They lost a bit of wind, but honestly don't have a whole lot of energy production to begin with. They have like half a dozen wind generators, another half dozen solar generators. Rafa Blick's energy situation is not great. We can see already they're accessing metal. Dimefruin doing well though. They're getting a lot of overdrive. They're getting a lot of energy set up in general. They can just build whatever they'd like. And Jasper, fairly even. 31, 35. No excess. No real stalling. I think it's okay. Jasper's in a reasonable situation, but Dimefriend is pulling way ahead and already has the air plant as well. So Jasper and Dimefriend engage in a bit of an air battle. Looks like Dimefriend will be able to protect the sovereignty of their territory, but this is going to be a bit tricky. Dimefriend ahead on the scouting as well, knows what Jasper's up to. Actually, what does Dimefriend know? That I want to know. Dimefriend pretty much knows Jasper. They're going to lose the Vulture though, and... Yeah, that's that's it for the Vulture. But yeah, Dimefriend knows what Jasper's up to. Jasper has Defender. Of course Jasper has Defender. Uh, th th the chat's gonna be so funny. Uh, just just watch that chat. That's that's where the main... That's where the meat of the whole thing comes in. Oops. That's where it's... That's where it's at for FFA. So Rafael Bluck seems to be kind of petering out a bit. I mean, they had a nice opening with the Spiders, but at this point... Well, they're they're okay for metal. They're okay for energy. They're kind of wavering. A lot of stuff is depending on reclaim right now. And going for a gunship plant. Okay, finally get a gunship plant. We see what Rafael Pluck's air option is going to be, and also just a different option. I find that interesting because air does make a fair amount of sense on this map. It is a fairly large map. It is a map. I mean, mostly it's the size of the map. But. Yeah, when everyone else is air superiority, I'm guessing we're going to see a lot of tridents coming out of Rafalblok because they might know. If they know already that Jasper and Dimefriend have an air force respectively, mostly Dimefriend, curious what they're going to go for. And indeed, tridents are their option because that makes sense. I mean, there's air. Go for the tridents, get rid of their air dominance, and then rush in. Because right now, the one thing Gunship typically has that air has a harder time, or planes have a harder time setting up, is air to ground damage. That's much easier for gunships. They have banshees, they have rapiers. For, I mean, when it comes to to planes, I mean, they have, obviously, phoenixes. Those are great for getting rid of, say, wind farms. And ravens are good for getting rid of metal extractors and single powerful units. But sustain damage, that's not a thing that planes do especially well. Swifts, large armies of swifts are probably the best thing for that. And even that, as we can see, that, against a unit with a thousand health, how many, how many Swifts are here? This is like a dozen Swifts? Yeah. So it's taken a, it's taken 10 Swifts, 4 passes, to get rid of a Scallop. That Scallop was able to walk quite a distance before dying. Didn't manage to deal a whole amount, huge amount of damage, but that's not an anti-air force anyway. So Tridents will be coming up for Rafabluk. Should be one... Oh, and a Black Dawn as well. Okay, that's kind of odd. I mean, that pretty much... Think, okay, I'm guessing what they're going for Black Dawn for is because Black Dawn's going to be tougher. However, Black Dawn kind of negates the advantage that you have for gunships compared to planes because it isn't that sustained damage. And Jasper coming into the back here, trying to get rid of Dimefriend's wind farm and not managing to do so. Dimefriend, very protective of their wind farm. Jasper would have managed to do a huge amount of damage if that had happened. Dimefriend's energy is actually not that much higher than their metal right now. Jasper's doing great economically. They've built up a fusion plant around here. Yeah, there it is. They've got a fusion plant, and Raffenpluck just got a fusion plant as well. Dimefriend, I don't see them building a fusion plant anywhere along here. So Dimefriend right now, they are not in a good position resource-wise. Blackton coming in as well. If that Blackton keeps going, it's going to have a bit of a harder time. It's baiting out the Swifts. 
Is it going to die? I think it, it might survive. The Trident's taking that out. Un Ooh. Black Dawn basically using the Razor for protection, and that's actually not too bad. Taking out a couple Swifts, pretty good bait. Didn't lose the Black Dawn in the process so far. Ah, now it goes down. I mean, it's inside of Rafaflik's territory, so reclaim will be easy, but still. That is unfortunate. The Swifts, about three of them go down for the Black Dawn. That, yeah, that's 450 metal for a 900 metal, or sorry. Oh, no, 360 metal unit. I missed, that's not right. No, 900 metal unit. I was right. 360 is the reclaim. So yeah, that that was value. Diamond actually got value out of that and didn't lose these wind generators. That's the important thing. Rapid Book has the perfect angle to get rid of those wind generators. That would have been pretty devastating. Jasper, they're still setting up this grizzly. They have, they have a grizzly. They're setting up a second grizzly. That is their option of choice for breaking down whatever defenses are there, which really there aren't many. These players are not going that heavy on pork. There's a bit of anti-air and a few fire bases set up around the map. But no pork walls, or no massive pork walls. Nothing that you'd need a grizzly for. Would help, though. Grizzly would definitely be of some use. Nightfriend with a Strider Hub, but I don't see any Striders belonging to them. No, they seem to be using it primarily to essentially just deal with everything here. Like, they're just using it for build power. They're not really using it to build up extra units. Which is an interesting choice. I don't... Often see Strider Hub for no apparent reason. And Singularity Reactor come from Dying for, and That is their power option of choice. A second... Where did Jasper build that second reactor? Or is that just a bunch of tidal generators? Okay, it looks like it's a bunch of smaller power plants. Jasper, with the power advantage, and actually overall the resource advantage. We should be seeing an engagement fairly soon once this Grizzly moves anywhere. At this point, Jasper just preparing for something. And Rafael Pluk not building much. They have Banshee... No, they have Wasps coming up. Not doing anything yet. And not building anything either. Rafael Pluk actually really risking getting an excess of metal here. I realize they have the storage. They do have 2,500 metal storage. And they're building even more storage. I'm hazarding that Rafael Pluk... They've got to be going for something big. I mean, let's see what they have here. Okay, they're going for Singularity Reactor as well. So they are building stuff. Although, it's another minute for that. That's going to take a little while. Not a bad idea, but time friend going. There we go. Finally, we get a Strider. Scorpion being built up here. Should be about a minute left. That's a lot of build power going into that Scorpion. I can't even tell how much there is. Well, I can. It's been counted up, but basically it's about 65 metal per second going into that. So yeah, Rafa Blux, that's their, that is their build. Jasper with three Vultures here, really worried about the anti-air. Wants to make sure they can get all the information they can on Rafaelplug, and they succeeded. Yeah. They know exactly what Rafaelplug's up to. So right now, Jasper, I'd say, has the lead. Economically, Dimefriend taking a bit more of a lead now, though. Information-wise, Jasper seems to have the lead. If they if they see these wind generators here, that's going to be a big deal. Or at least it would have been if it weren't for the Singularity Reactor. These wind generators are kind of not really that big of a deal anymore. Really, I'd say the bigger deal is obviously the Scorpion. We do have the Airplane Factory coming in for Rafael Pluck, finally going and joining the Airplane Club, deciding that there was really no other way of going about life other than building airplanes. And with a Scorpion up, that should be a bit of a surprise. I don't... Oh, wait. Oh, does Jasper... I can't even tell if Jasper knows. They probably know. They saw the Strider Hub. They saw everything. They are probably aware Scorpion's on the way. They're also aware of the Singularity Reactor and decided to make that public knowledge because that would be a thing to do. At this point, though, Jasper is the only player without a Singularity Reactor. Both Rafaelplug and Dimefront have had one for about five minutes, and that's... Yeah, that's kind of been a thing. Hmm. There we go. So yeah, for the last five minutes, that has been how the game has gone. It's been, or not five minutes, like two minutes. Singularity Reactor is everywhere. So we should be seeing some super weapons fairly soon. I mean, this amount of metal, Rafaelplug especially. Rafaelplug has been playing extremely defensive. They have been a hermit. They've been trying to just be the neutral state while Dimefriend and Jasper go at each other. And Dimefriend, scouting out Jasper, sees the fusion plants. Probably sees... I mean, it looked like they didn't really see much. They saw the fusion plants and that's about it. That's all there really is to see over there. And no player going for nukes yet. Oh, never mind, never mind. Jasper is hot. No, that's a Singularity Reactor. That's just the similar icon. So Jasper going for a Singularity Reactor in the corner. 
Dime Friend going for just that one singularity reactor. No one going for nukes. No one going for super weapons. We do have that scorpion wanting to find some some way to attack, some optimal avenue of attack. Dime Friend with the Grizzly on defense. Jasper engaging with their pair. No, three Grizzlies now. And Rafaelplik just happily making sure that no one sees what they're up to. And getting up Athena's as well. Which will be setting up ultimatums. Okay, so we should be seeing some Strider kills, or actually Grizzly kills. Grizzlies are the relevant thing right now. I'm guessing that Rafaelplik is expecting there to be other Striders or other heavy units they need to get rid of. At this point, it's just Grizzlies. However, it's still handy. So, it will be useful. And there's that Scorpion coming in here. Defense Scorpion gets rid of one of the Grizzlies for free. Looks like the other Grizzlies managed to escape. But hey, that Scorpion's still on the table. However, Jasper knows it's there. Dynthron cannot hide that Grizzly, or that, that Scorpion any longer because, well, it can kind of hide it, sort of, but not really. And another Singularity Reactor coming in for Dynthron. Looks like Jasper has their set up and another one. So both, all the players just massing up Singularity Reactors. I mean, what will probably happen in about, I'd say, 5-10 minutes, we will be seeing Striders from everybody, if not Nukes or... Oh, there's... Okay, Silencer are coming in from Jasper. Looks like Rafael Pluck continuing to avoid Super Weapons. They have the Singularity. They have... What else do they have? Not really sure. Diamond has their one Singularity Reactor. Jasper has their two. Or just about to be two. But also the extra fusion reactors. Jasper is... Jasper's had an energy. Rafaelblok just ahead in general on economy, but Rafaelblok has not been spending it. They have a bunch of Athena's idol. They have all these ultimatums just... Oh, those are ultimatums. Those are conjurers. What am I saying? Well, this is ever ultimatums. Those are... I got that totally wrong. Wishful thinking on my part. My apologies. I thought... I mean, they looked... I should have clicked on them. That was my mistake. But it should have been ultimatums, darn it. And Rafaelblok... Well aware that a nuke should be coming. And indeed, a nuke will be coming soon enough, so... Anti-nuke system has been built up. Will definitely... That protector will definitely beat the silencer by a long time. But yeah, those are just conjurers. My mistake. Those really should have been ultimatums. It would have helped get rid of a lot of these units. Especially... Well, okay, the scorpions, not really. But the grizzlies crack open Jasper a little bit. I mean, Rafael Pluck, I'm not sure what the strategy is right now. Diamond clearly just trying to go for the overpower strategy. They're trying to set up so that if Jasper attacks them, they're not worried about Rafael Pluck, worry more about Jasper. If Jasper attacks them, Diamond basically figures, I have the stuff to beat them. Jasper... Going for heavy economy? Seems to be really trying to make sure that they don't lose out on that, but not really doing much else. Getting some artillery. Just looks like Jasper's focus is break down defenses and then go. Dimefriend's focus is get up enough units to punch anything that hits them. Just deal with whatever comes at them. And Rafael Pluk, they've been defensive all game. Very defensive economic, not really seeming to have a strategy to win. Just trying more to not lose. That seems to be the way they're going right now. They're just... Avoiding loss is their biggest priority. My guess is Rafael Pluk's strategy is basically let Dimefriend and Jasper fight and then deal with the winner. Because... Rafael Pluk has had an economic advantage this entire game, or almost the entire game. Has a lot of metal in storage. Does not have an has a, does not have a military to deal with this. Decent defense, crummy military. Jasper is a pretty good mix of both, and is definitely going for artillery. Dimefriend, I don't even see anti nuke systems at all around here. Dimefriend is actually really vulnerable to a silencer. Uh, they're either not expecting it, or they're just waiting until the time that's most likely to happen. I mean, Jasper, they don't have a huge amount of anti-air that's... I mean, they have a few Screamers, I think. But three or four Vultures could easily run in here. If they see that Protector, or even see the Silencer, which... Oh, the Silencer are actually no longer being built. Really? Interesting. So, no one... Well, neither Rafaelblok nor Jasper are confident that a nuke would work. And Rafaelblok going for the Bantha, going... Actually, they're switching over to punch down the door. Dimefriend. Dimefriend has an army advantage, not to the point they could easily punch down Jasper's door, but enough that it would work decently well to at least make a dent. And still allow them to deal with Rafael Pluck until that Bantha gets set up. Once that Bantha's up, which will be now. Sheesh. Okay, let's see if Rafael Pluck goes for punching down the door. 
And another Bantha... We're just going to have a Bantha army. That's what Rafalblik's doing. It looks like a Bantha army coming from Rafalblik. Jasper is... I really wish Jasper would have set up that silencer. Ah, there we go. We are getting the silencer being built up. Because I just feel like that silencer needs to be built up. And nice, getting the getting the sneaky beat on there. Ah, getting an eraser. Oh, an eraser. Interesting. I mean, it makes sense to build a silencer the way they did. And, oh, did... No. Radar coverage, but no actual vision. All they know is there's a sneaky bead there. And maybe not even then. That's just Cloak is not handled well enough in Fog of War for spectators. So, yeah, that's... That's good for Jasper. Jasper definitely can get that nuke off without anyone noticing. Dime Friend... All the Singularity Reactors, decently sized armies of the Bantha. No, it's not even a Bantha. That's just the Conjurers. Lotus. Lotus Brush in the south. And that Scorpion's doing nothing. What the heck? Oh, has... I think Dynethrin knows. Does Dynethrin know? Dynethrin knows! Dynethrin will be building up an anti-nuke any second now. Yeah, there it is. They've already got one set up. So everyone has it set up. So Dying Friends got the knowledge. They're clearly playing the politics. And Rafalpluk. Yeah. That's all they can really do is like, oh hey, by the way, Rafalpluk's got two Banthas. Might want to deal with that. Just so you know. It's a thing. But yeah, what I guess was gonna happen is that Jasper's just gonna stockpile nukes for a while. And it looks like they are going for a Bantha of their own. Probably going to try to find and destroy the anti-nuke. I like the setup, though. Dug in anti-nuke with a shield generator around it. That's going to be pretty much impossible to deal with without basically dealing with the base entirely first. And on top of that, Vindicator coming in. So Bantha drops. At this point, Rafalplex just setting up to take out whoever they like. That's what this is going to turn into. And neither other player has gunships. Dimefriend does have spiders, but they haven't really used it for anything other than fleas, so a bit more scouting, which has been Dimefriend's main thing. Their game plan has been information, and kind of politics. And Rafalplik, I'm not sure how they're going to try to sneak in with those fleas. They're clearly trying to. That's clearly their goal. Get in with the fleas, find something. They're also clearly not paying attention to it. And that Bantha just about done. There we go, another Bantha done. No Vindicator up, though. Rafalplik might want to build up a Vindicator there just to get that going. Because that... Ooh. Ooh, there is a Screamer. Screamer and Chainsaw, so getting through that Vindicator is not going to be easy. Now, I don't think that Erasers actually work for air units, though. I think... I mean, it worked for air units. I just don't think you can hold it at the time and have cloaking. However, even then, it would probably still do a pretty good job. And down goes the Vindicator. The Bantha forced to drop... Not able to get into the base. That was not likely, really. All things considered. But I think what's going to happen... Rafalplik should be able to break in through here decently well. If they get to the anti-nuke, Rafalplik does not seem to have a silencer of their own. The only person here with a silencer is Jasper. They have a silencer. They have some stockpiling going on. It's going to take another minute or so. Really, Rafalplik's entire priority is Bantha. Get that Bantha in there. Deal with everything they can using the Bantha. And that should deal with pretty much everything that Dying Friend has. And then deal with Jasper. Rafalplik basically can only be beaten by Dying Friend and Jasper working together just by army value. But then Jasper does have a Bantha of their own. Like if Jasper manages to get in and somehow kill this protector, then Silencer reigns, just be Silencer reign on top of the base. That's it. That's just what'll happen. How many... Okay, so only the one anti-nuke. I believe three nukes will overwhelm an anti-nuke. But then there's also the shields on top of that. So yeah, it's not going to be easy for Grappleplik to lose by nukes. There are other ways. I mean, other super weapons that exist would be able to get through. I think most super weapons actually would be able to get through that. The shields would protect against, like, Discord Ray Party or Starlight or anything else. Okay, Starlight's way too expensive. But other large game-ending weapons. I wonder if Rafalplik's actually going to plan to go for one of those. The Banthas, unfortunately for Rafalplik, one of them has been knocked out, so that will... That'll die. 10,000 metal. Pretty good value for Dynefriend. Really, Dynefriend's getting a lot of value here. 
Dying from with a Bantha of their own. Everyone with a Bantha. The Bantha arms race. I think I still think Ref Outlook is winning in the Bantha gap. And they also have the Vindicator as well. But that's one Bantha down. Two more left though. I mean, Banthas are being produced very rapidly. So, well, for Banthas. Like once every two minutes. Which is rapidly for Banthas. These things are expensive. Sheesh. However, Dying Throne at this point, going for Scorpions. They really don't care about Banthas. They just care a lot more about dealing with Banthas, setting up whatever they can to eventually, I guess, deal with a Silencer. Already has one stockpiled. Nothing too threatening yet. It's going to be one of those things where in like 10 minutes, it'll be a problem. Like, bear it in mind, it'll come up. At this point, a lot of smaller skirmishes. Republic just trying to keep that southwest to themselves. And relatively even economy all around. Neither player, none of the players way too ahead or way too behind, but we are starting to see the pork problems. Basically, the entire water has been urchined up for just about everybody. Now, on land, there's a lot more room to move. But even then, it's only for ground units, and of course, scorpions getting in the way. So at this point, Dying Friend, their only vulnerable path would be around here if spiders get through this section here. But the problem, of course, is scorpions are still there, and that's basically where all the military units are being built. So good luck with that. Another band set up, and we have Dynfrin going for... Okay, they are going for Vindicators as well. They want their drops. That makes sense. Not trying to drop, though. They don't... Do they? Oh, they have a Bantha. Yeah, so Bantha drop coming in from them, and I think they're probably going to either go for Jasper, maybe try to get rid of Jasper's nuke. I feel like that Dying friend might just go for revenge, try to get rid of her foul look, and then from there it would just be. That would be really hard, actually, because there's a screamer right here, and that would just be enough on its own. Oops. So the screamer coming in, that's like, this is where I kind of was reluctant, because this is where it gets all porky. So let's speed up a bit. I mean, Jasper continuing to just build up. Not really doing much. Building up a lot of scallops. Looking like they're going for a bit of a push. Another Bantha bites the dust. And, of course, Chainsaw. Further front Chainsaw for Dimefriend. Getting rid of the Bantha from... Sorry, Republic getting rid of the Bantha from Dimefriend. Like, really, I feel like at this point, an Amphibious Assault Force, an Amphibious Strider would be the better option. And Banthas are not it. Detriments might be? I don't know. But Banthas aren't it. Because I say that because, really, as far as C goes, there are urchins and not much else, and that's where a lot of the Singularity Reactors are. And destroying those would be a massive blow. But there's a lot of air defenses, so dropping is no good. Scorpions are basically dominating the ground, so ground assault's no good. But C assault is relatively open, and Jasper taking advantage of that. Looks like Republic has not defended much over here. In fact, Republic... Totally open. These scallops are going to wreck face. And Foulpluck noting the streamer exists, but yeah. Bit of a problem for their offense, but their defense is going to be wide open in just a second. These scallops going to get in. That'll be a problem. Actually, if those scallops get in enough, they probably won't be able to get to the anti-nuke. Because that would require going along either a path like this, which runs through all the defenses, or going around the back, they'll be spotted. Fewer defenses, but still, anti-nukes are not weak. They're not that frail. It looks like the scallop is, in fact, going towards where the Singularity Reactor is known to be, getting rid of one of Rafalplex Singularity Reactors. Clever thing that Rafalplex done, though. Singularity Reactor here. It's, it's just here, as well as this one over here, and then another one back here. Whereas Jasper and Dimefriend have mostly clumped up, especially Dimefriend. Wow, has Dimefriend ever clumped up the Singularity Reactors? Oh. But yeah, that's that's the thing. There's a lot clumped up there. Dimefriend basically got rid of Rafalplex's opening force, and Rafalplex about to lose pretty much everything underwater. At least one, possibly two of the Singularity Reactors. And Rafalplex trying to play the politics game to get out of this, but I think Jasper is going, you know what, now I've got an easy target. You're, you're an easy target, and I've got nukes anyway. I've got nukes. I've got enough anti-nuke just in case. I've got ravens. Oh, wow, that's a lot of ravens. And that anti-nuke is not well protected. In fact, there's a path. I mean, there's some screamers. Yes. No, that's anti-nuke. Wow. Yeah, if 
if Jasper's aware of the actual position, that'll work. And there's one Singularity down. Another one down. Profile Block taking a lot of damage. I think with Jasper... Jasper might try a new Profile Block, but I think Jasper's best bet... Well, what the... Oh, Tactical Missile Silo. I think Jasper's best bet right now is... Basically, to scout out, try to figure out where Diamond Friends and Nuke I think they might already know. Yeah, they do. They, they know exactly where it is. So, take Ravens up to those. Take Ravens, get rid of the Anti Nuke. But no, they're actually going to get rid of. Oh, okay, they're getting rid of Rafalplex Anti Nuke. So, this is going to go down. Then Nuke's going to completely wipe out Rafalplex. So, Rafalplex done. There's not much they can do other than politics, and Jasper's way too confident they can take on both, and frankly, they can. These Ravens will be able to get a good shot, get rid of that protector, and there we go. There should be seeing the silencer shot right about now. Good shot there. And then once that's done, Dimefriend's anti-nuke is way more vulnerable. Both of them are far more vulnerable. Only one of them is known, though, but the other one will be scouted out on the way. So if Jasper knows that's there, they'll just be able to fire off the anti-nuke, and there it goes. We have Shiny. We have Shiny incoming. I mean, granted, it's FFA, so it's normal. And also, there are shields. This is a bit iffy. It will deal damage, though. Actually, forget what I said about shields. You don't see enough nukes for me to really know that offhand. I'm sorry about that. But yeah, that's... That's Rafalplex base. Did they have a backup? Well, they kind of had a backup, but... Sheesh, they basically lost everything right there. So this is between Jasper and Diamond now. Although, another one coming... Really? Really? I think that's a little extreme. I would... I would try to get rid of Dying Friend right now. Like, seriously, get these... Get all these Ravens repaired. Run those Ravens and get rid of Dying Friend's anti-nukes. And then wipe out Dying Friend. I mean, Rafalplex done. Rafalplex totally done. 22 metal per second. It's just not going to work out. Their only hope is the fact that they do have a Singularity Reactor. If they grid that, it might work out okay. They can kind of rebuild, maybe. Nothing's really assaulting them on the ground. But yeah, at this point, Jasper basically was going to want to essentially just break down Dimefriend's defenses and then nuke Dimefriend. Take the game that way. So at this point, that's Rafael Pluck trying to get back into protection mode, but... Wait, an... Oh, that's... What, just another one? No, that... Really? Three nukes? Okay, that's the little overkill. That was all three nukes. I really don't agree with that last nuke. Even the second nuke, I kind of disagree with. But the last nuke, I really don't agree with. Because Dimethrin's going to take two nukes at least to go down. Possibly three to get rid of the stuff in the water. Dimethrin's going to take a lot of nukes to be taken down. I mean, Rafalp looks done. Clearly. And Detriment coming in. Detriment is amphibious. Okay, so that would actually work as a way down. Let's speed it up again. But yeah, it's like... Okay, Detriment would allow for a way into here. And... Okay, Ground Force coming in. Trying to get... I mean, this will finish off Rafael Pluk. So Rafael Pluk, totally out of the game. At this point, it is Dying Throne versus Jasper. And I just... I don't know. That Detriment's going to be a bit of a pain. Although, at the same time, we are going to see some Banthi drops pretty soon from Dying Throne. But the detriment's going to take a while. Like, how long is it going to take? Yeah, eight minutes. That's going to be taking quite some time. And really, these ravens could go out here and get rid of the anti-nukes. Jasper should invest in doing that. I realize it's another minute and a half for those nukes to be done. But there's only two anti-nukes. And even if Jasper doesn't know that, and Jasper doesn't actually totally know... Oh, they do! Oh, they do! They totally know that. Jasper has complete knowledge. They know where both the anti-nukes are. They don't necessarily know it's both the anti-nukes, but they know where two of the anti-nukes are. That's a big deal. And nukes coming in for Dimefriend as well. Dimefriend with two of them on top of that, so really it comes down to whoever destroys the other's anti-nukes first, but Jasper's got that in the bag. These ravens go out and take out the anti-nukes. Dimefriend will, will soon fall. However, Dimefriend going for a different strategy, overwhelming with sheer numbers of nukes. Jasper... Sees that second silencer, doesn't necessarily see the rest of that, but yes, does know the second silencer is on the way. And it looks like Jasper might actually be trying to open up Dimefriend's airspace. Well, they definitely are succeeding in doing so. Dimefriend's airspace being opened up, Screamer down. I think this is where the Ravens are going to come in. 
clearly Jasper is trying to open up Dying Friend, trying to make sure Dying Friend can't defend against a load of Ravens coming in to just deal with everything. And that should do the trick. I mean, there, no, there's still a bit of defense. There are still some. These chainsaws, that's still a threat. But otherwise, yeah, there's not much anti-air. Really, the problem... The primary problem at this point really is just getting rid of... Oh, and of course, Aos is... But the primary problem at this point really is getting rid of the anti-nukes. And there we go, Jasper going for it. Jasper is going for the anti-nukes. Is that... That should be enough. That should totally do the trick. One of them down. Oh, I love it. I love it, Jasper's splitting. Yes! Nice, I love that. And now we should see both silencers because there's two of them. Oh, there's three of them, actually. Oh, no, there's two. That's that two. Waiting until both of them are done, and first one should be targeting... Where's the first one targeting? Ah, okay, there's the second one. First one targeting the main part of the base, and this... And that down goes pretty much everything Dying Friend has. That's not in the water, by the way. Water is still safe, so Dying Friend's energy economy is quite healthy. Their metal economy is a bit in tatters, but... Energy economy is fine. Ah, uh, never mind. Ignore what I said, because there goes the energy economy. Dying Friend completely torn apart now. And apparently they built some defenses while I was not looking, because, yeah. But yeah, Dying Friend... Dying Friend still has a large army, though. Profileflex's army was somewhat damaged by that attack. Dying Friend's army is in a much healthier position, and at this point, that's what the Ravens are being used for. Deal with what's left of that. It won't do a huge amount of good, though. It does help get rid of the nuke silo, or attach silo. Yeah, Jasper at the same time, really strong. I mean, Rafalpluk, obviously Rafalpluk and Dianfriend both have very good reason to get revenge. Rafalpluk has the means. They've got Banthas. The detriment won't be up for another 20 seconds, although I gotta say, I think Jasper might have been timing out to try to make sure the detriment was basically done by the time that the attacks happened. Because now Rafalpluk and Dianfriend essentially have to team up against Jasper. So all Jasper has to do now is make sure that neither Rafalpluk nor Dianfriend working together like, individually, they can't do much. And if they work together, that they also won't be able to get through everything they have. And Jasper does have a military... Actually, slight disadvantage. If Rafalplik and Dimefront team up, it'll basically be just loads of Banthas with a few Scorpions. Just raw power. Nothing really type countering. No ultimatums or anything. So we'll see how that goes. And another nuke dropping inside of Dimefront's base. Missing the Banthas, though. That was clearly the target. Didn't quite manage. But did manage to at least make lights. Flashy lights and smoke. Maybe irradiate a few things. Not that it really matters. These robots are relatively radiation resistant. Gotta say, it's quite impressive. Yeah, so Jasper really just making life difficult. It's pretty much a battle of attrition now. Just Jasper hunting down every last little thing that's still left. Not really sure what else to say here, because Jasper just needs to bomb out enough. I mean, Dying Friend's basically dead. They have they have military. The two Banthas, essentially. That That's their military. And a couple Scorpions. There's 2,000 metal of other miscellaneous things. Not much. Rafael looks in a much healthier position. They have three Banthas. They have a stronger... Well, most of their army is the three Banthas. That's still 32,000 metal worth. Another 7,000 outside of that, though. But yeah, that's there. On top of that, they have enough defenses that at least the bombers can't easily get in. They will still be able to deal some damage, but they will take losses. Dimefriend, on the other hand, they haven't got much. Defense-wise, Dimefriend has a half-constructed, which will soon die, chainsaw. And that's about it. Dimefriend really isn't the target of interest anymore. Like, Jasper should go after Rafaelpluk right now. Rafaelpluk is rebuilding. They're getting cloak about factory, probably going to use that for possibly size. I could see that. Although... Really? Why? Jasper is not set up in the land. Most of Jasper's assets are underwater. So, I don't know, that's a bit of an odd choice. However, Rafaelpluk setting up once again that protector. They're just getting themselves going again. I mean, Rafaelpluk's really building themselves back up. Just taking advantage of Jasper ripping Dianfriend to shreds to get back into the game. And Jasper seems to realize this because we are seeing the attack. Rafaelpluk getting the brunt of Jasper's army. This does leave Jasper open, though. 
These Banthas could run in, and there isn't a whole lot in the base. There are Banthas. But there's not a whole lot of direct firepower that's gonna easily get rid of this. And what does this even have? We gotta look up the detriment stuff here. I've never seen a detriment before. Okay, so they have Gauss guns, they have straight up missiles that are dealing about almost a thousand damage each, and they have lasers. Got a lot of powerful things. They could probably deal with the Banthas without too much issue. I'm not quite sure why Diamond is being so... I mean, I guess EMP is a problem, but I'm not sure why... Sorry, Jasper, why they're being so timid. The one thing, though, Diamond... No, they're not building anything. Basically, Diamond's entire game plan is everything they have right now. Their main hope, as far as I can tell, is that Jasper kills themselves trying to break Rafaelbluk. That seems to be the main hope. And I don't really see that happening. The one problem that Jasper has right now is lack of vision. Because these missiles aren't really... And they're hitting the razors, but not hitting much else. Holy crap! Okay, that's a thing. But yeah, Rafael Plug might be able to get some super weapons. I'm going to have to wait to check up on Dimefriend, because Dimefriend's going to take a while to be back in action. And now, the Banthas are visible. They should be going down fairly soon. Oh, they don't... Oh, the missiles don't home. That makes sense. But yeah, I think Dying Friend should just hang back. Hang back, try to rebuild. Hope that Jasper breaks themselves on Rafael Bloke, or at least gets a lot of attrition trying to get rid of Rafael Bloke. If that detriment goes down, Jasper doesn't have a whole lot to work with. Like, that's 24,000 metal worth of unit. And Rafael Bloke's army is actually about the same value, so the detriment is pretty much just weight. And another nuke hitting Rafael Bloke's base. Taking them out again. Another anti-nuke is going to come up, but that nuke setting Rafael Bloke back a little bit. Honestly, though, Silencer should try to hit the Banthas. I mean, it's, that sounds kind of silly, because it's not a huge amount of damage, but it... Well, it is, actually. Not enough to kill, but it's like two or three hitting the Banthas? At least it would soften them up. Which you know, sounds weird. Strategic nuke to soften things up. But yeah, if it, if it did that, sheesh. That would completely wipe things out. However, that being said, Jasper, they run pretty much out on Ravens. Jasper needs to build a lot more Ravens right now. Focusing most of their build power onto another Bantha. Like, more and more Banthas. Don't want to lose out in the Bantha gap there. Can't fall behind. But still, that's going to be a bit of a problem, because those Ravens have been winning them the game. The only reason why Jasper has been doing so well is that the Ravens tore apart the Protectors, which allowed the Silencer to just go ham. At this point, there's not much getting rid of any new anti-nukes, and Rafaud looks pretty well set up defensively. What they have right now, they're good. It would take three or four nukes to get rid of it. And Jasper, with only one nuke silo, can't do a huge amount of damage. So the one thing right now is that Dimefriend... Dimefriend and Rafaelbluk, mostly Rafaelbluk at this point, they have enough on the ground to be able to deal with what's going on. They can deal with Jasper's stuff pretty easily. Not super easily, but if they team up, there is a possibility. And that's the thing, is that I, I expect that will come up. Duck coming in as well. Or no, Conscious coming in, never mind. Dime friend just trying to set up their defenses as best they can to make sure nothing else happens. But honestly, the problem is that this protector is the only important thing. Because as soon as Dime friend has any... It shows any weakness, or not even weakness, it shows any strength. You're just gonna see a nuke. And, ah. The anti-nuke. Doing his job. Making sure that Dimefriend does not die, or Republic either. Republic actually, with this anti-nuke... Yeah, they're protecting a lot of what Dimefriend cares about, too. Kind of implicitly, but it kind of works. Wait, what are they talking about? Oh, I see. But yeah, I think Republic and Dimefriend clearly working together right now. I mean, there's no other way for this to go. I don't know if they have a ceasefire going on here, but... Yeah. Oh, I can't really see the ceasefire status. But anyway, at this point, Rafael Pluk... Kind of falling... Like, they're, they're okay, but economically speaking, Jasper's still ahead. Ravens are back up. How many Ravens are left? There are eight Ravens on the field. It's good stuff. Possibly another range needs to go down. Ooh. Vultures do spot the anti-nukes. Did their job. So that means the Ravens, however, can't really get in. There are a lot of them, and they are being built up at a rapid rate. 
The problem, however, is that while they are being built up like once, one every second or so, that's a lot of screamers. Those screamers have a lot of missiles in them. Like, 11 missiles per, just about. Not to mention the chainsaws. Like, there's a lot of anti-air defense. And it looks like Jasper, realizing this, goes along a ground assault path. And all the stun missiles hitting. Ooh, nicely done for for a foul look. Jasper not really able to get a huge amount of damage into the Banthas. But at the same time, flank. That was a flank attack from Jasper. Don't think this, those scalps are... Are they going to do anything? They'll get rid of some storage. Actually, oh no. No. They'll get rid of a lot. Get rid of storage, get rid of Singularity Reactor, which will basically take out Rafael Bluck's entire energy economy, because this is Rafael Bluck's energy economy right now. They only have 20 energy outside of that. Raven's working to deal with this, but it's not enough. Not accurate enough. Not fast enough. It's really not going to work. And Jasper on the front as well, just keeping Rafael Bluck occupied. Dimefront with an anti-nuke, so Dimefront isn't quite as vulnerable, but really the problem is these scallops. A few of them do go down. Ooh, three left. Two left. Oh, no, it's still three left. Singularity Reactor is probably safe. Yep. Ah, that scallop having to stop to attack. Well, not have to stop to attack, but did stop to attack. Didn't have to. Could have been moving the entire time. And another nuke coming up, which won't really do a whole lot of good. All the anti-nukes are still in place. So, this nuke will just be knocked out of the sky pretty quick. Oh, what? Oh, okay, so Jas Jasper is going for the offensive nuke, or the, not so much offensive, but the softening nuke. Wipe out the Strider's nuke, getting, ooh, nice. Dimefront basically losing their army at this point. I mean, they just lost everything. They These Scorpions are pretty much all they had on the level of what Jasper has. And that's done. Rafalpluk, however, just about... Like, Rafalpluk and Dimefront still about on the level with Jasper together. And Rafalpluk is catching up. Main base has been re... Not quite rebuilt, but certainly the important stuff. The metal has been rebuilt. Singularity reactors being rebuilt. Dimefront might go down, but at this point, Rafalpluk seems to be just trying to wait until Jasper breaks themselves in Dimefront. Like, both both players are basically just hoping Jasper breaks, the, breaks themselves on the other player. But, of course, Jasper still has a lot to work with. And, ooh, nice terraform wall. Trying to get rid of... Trying to stop the Banthas from getting into the main base, which is pretty wise. However, no Antinuke in the main base. There is an Antinuke near enough by, though. And Rafalpluk getting into Dimefriend's base when Jasper... Sorry, Jasper's been attacking Dimefriend. Defensive nuke from Jasper, which is handy. Actually, is that going to get rid of the Banthas? No, it does not get rid of the Banthas. The silencer has been... It's gotten... Silencer is basically... That's what it's down to. If that goes down, that's... That goes down! Jasper has no major threat anymore. Jasper... Okay, they have the detriment, yes. But that's all they have is a big threat. The main base taking massive damage. I think Jasper's about to lose pretty much their entire infrastructure that they've been using to keep the game in their hands. And Dimefrund... They're reclaiming loads. They've got, just got reclaim up for days. Basically waiting for this attack to finish. I'm guessing they're trying to, as quickly as possible, build up. Because Rafael's look clearly managing to get back at Jasper for all the pain Jasper's caused them. Oh, really? Jasper's commander is the last... Oh, really? Seriously? Holy crap. And Jasper has no factories either. If that commander goes down, Jasper is playing a tactics game. They're out of units at that point. And Rafalpluk with a teleport out. Unfortunately, the teleport did go down, so Rafalpluk losing all their bances inside of Jasper's base, giving Jasper a really nice reclaim opportunity. However, timing-wise, Jasper's got this one commander, which is currently idle and nothing else. Wait, whose are these? Oh, never mind. These are Jasper's. Jasper's good. Jasper's got this sorted. They've got Athena's. This is not just their commander. Silly dime friend. There's more than just that one thing. But yeah, Rafalpluk's rebuilt. Pretty much. That attack was devastating for them, though. They did lose a lot. They do still have anti-nukes, and they don't have to worry about silencers for another five minutes. I mean, it's obviously going to be rebuilt. Jasper's going to go for it. But at the same time, I think Dimefrind, they have an opportunity here. I don't know if they're going to take it. I think they're going to just continue to build up, try to get their army set up. They're not going to go for nukes yet. But Jasper did lose their anti-nukes. And clearly, Rafalpluk 
kind of getting into a comfortable position. Not dominant, Jasper's still ahead. But mainly it's the detriment. If you discount the detriment, Jasper's... Jasper's also playing catch-up. There's no other way around it. Jasper's got a good position to play catch-up from, but Rafalpluk has taken back their position after nearly losing it. It's just this area here just gave Rafalpluk the room to rebuild, and Jasper attacking Dynefriend and not attacking this area here. I mean, they did nuke a bit, but they didn't attack this one little cove here. If they had tried to deal with this, it would have been perfect. It would have worked out. Dynefriend would have been open, but it didn't. So Dynefriend right now able to rebuild as well. Jasper having lost basically everything, and another assault coming in, getting rid of the anti-nuke. Where's the nuke? I didn't see a silencer coming up from... Is there no silencer? I guess that was just on principle. Just make sure there's no anti-nukes. Because I don't see Rafael Pluck or Dynefriend having silencers on hand. In fact, no one really going for silencers at this point. Detriment not taking any shit, though. They're getting rid of all the Ravens. That's not going to work out too well for, for Foul Pluck. Really, Jasper is still in a very good position. It's just Jasper's more in a position that it's very difficult to break Jasper, but it's also difficult for Jasper to do anything. For Foul Pluck, however, they're... I mean, they're pretty strong building up. It should take a couple minutes, and their army will be on par with Jasper, and they could actually take out Dimefront if they wanted to. But clearly, Jasper is the target. I mean, they want to get rid of Jasper... Break Jasper as best as possible, then go for Dynefriend. Dynefriend probably realizes this. Probably wants to make sure that Jasper's still enough of a threat that they aren't the target. Because as soon as Jasper goes down, Rafael is going to turn their sights to Dynefriend. And if Dynefriend's got the sights on them, at this point Dynefriend's down. And they've got half the army value of Jasper or Rafael Economy-wise, they're on par, but that isn't super helpful. They're not going to build up their army as a result relative to the other players. The one thing, however, is there are still the anti-nukes, and there are no nukes. There are no silencers in play. Jasper hasn't bothered to rebuild, and neither other player has really gone for it. Nor have they gone for a lot of str I mean, Strider have finally up here, and an ultimatum has been built up. Oh, well, I hear it. There it is. I don't know, that's an ultimatum. That's just the Panthers. That was the ultimatum D-Gun. That wouldn't be a bad idea, actually. Not a great idea, but not a bad idea. Actually, come to think of it, for the cost, it would be a good idea. I'm a bit surprised no one's gone for them. Like, a dozen ultimatums. Just walk in with all these ultimatums and wreck all the Banthas. Speaking of Banthas, for Foul Plug, they're going for it. That's This is their attempted endgame on Jasper. Dynefren better hope that Jasper doesn't lose, because Dynefren needs to rebuild it. There still needs to be time for rebuilding. I don't think Jasper's going to break for this, though. The detriment is still there. There's a lot of repair going on. The stealth is helping. Cloaking around, that's doing some good. That's making it a bit more difficult for Jasper to easily deal with this. Certainly at range. And that detriment, is that going to get stunned out? No! Not even close! Oh, never mind. It is kind of close. Not that close, though. Not close enough that it matters. So we're probably in a strong position, but not really as strong as it needs to be. And wow, that's a lot of urchins. So we're probably learning their lesson about anti-sea defenses, making sure that scallops can't get in trivially. But still, Jasper not really going for that anymore. Not yet. They might. They still have the amphib factory, or they rebuilt the amphib factory rather. They still could. Now, dying friend on the other hand. Are you Okay, there's a silencer. There's another silencer. That's the next silencer in the game. So in five minutes time, or two and a half minutes because I'm at double speed, we should see the silencer go out. Possibly to get rid of Jasper. Probably not, though. That's the one thing with Banthas. They are very tough. Like, you need three or four nukes to deal with them on their own with nukes. And the detriment is stunned out. There we go. For 13 seconds or so, those Banthas have got free shots. They're not taking advantage of it. Actually, not even... Yeah, that didn't quite work. And that detriment really gets away from EMP quickly. There's something I'm missing about how quickly EMP goes away? Well, apparently, I am, because that's bloody fast. Sucks for the Banthas, too. They do have the D-Gun again, so they could try that move again. And Jasper has kept everything close up. And it's... Ooh, nice. 
Profile Pluck with the sneaky Tacnum Silo, the only one with the Tacnum Silo, mind you, and burning up the can Jasper's forces. Honestly, I don't think that's a big loss. Jasper right now is already kind of, is quite behind metal-wise. Profile Pluck with a massive military advantage now. And they managed to get a stun again. Not quite there yet. Did not manage to get the stun on the detriment, and the detriment is managing to get rid of pretty much all the Banthas, no problem. So if Rafal Plug just breaking themselves trying to get rid of this detriment. He's about half dead. Something. And will that work? No, not for the detriment. Gets rid of the support forces, did not get rid of the detriment, does manage to wipe out the support forces, though. Nice single beam there. It's pretty good. And very nice there. Very, very nice Inferno shot there. Forcing the Conscious out of the way. Stopping production and possibly getting rid of this. Oh, nice. Gets rid of the Screamer. That opens things up very nicely. And the Silencer should... Okay, it's ready. Not sure what's going to happen. I think once the Anti-Nuke's done... That, I don't even know. Once the Anti-Nuke's gone, Jasper's basically gone. There's not a huge amount of reason. There's not a huge reason to try to get rid of it further. The anti nukes are really the only thing that's there of any value. Now that means, of course, Rafael is going to just turn their sights to getting rid of of Dynfriend. and Dynfriend going for meteors, going for Zenith wants to four minutes. They've got four minutes to try to meteor out Rafael Blue. Now bear in mind, meteors are not the most accurate, and they do give reclaim, so that's a bit of a double-edged sword. We'll see how that goes, hopefully, because I would like to see... I have never actually casted super weapons like that. Oh, okay, so Di uh, Fern and Dynefriend, they are... Dynefriend and Rafael Pluck are actually talking in private messages, but I can't see it because it wasn't in the replay. It doesn't get stored in replays, doesn't get shown to spectators, so I have no idea. And Dynefriend, with the Scorpions, getting rid of Rafael Pluck, stopping Rafael Pluck from doing much, just... Really wants to buy that time to get the meteor up. It should be another. Oof. Still a long time. It's actually not consistently being built. That's the problem. I mean, Diamond needs to focus on getting enough scorpions to buy the time to build the the meteor or the zenith rather. And ultimatums. Hooray! There are indeed ultimatums. I was not hearing things. There were ultimatums. They did exist, and the detriment still exists as well. At full health. I mean, ultimatums are good, but they don't deal a huge amount of damage. I mean, that okay, that's one. It's twelve hundred per shot. It's actually a lot of damage, but it's really difficult to tell just by looking at it. Anyway, more bands coming. How many bands are in here? Oh yeah, I forgot to point out the big Bertha, which hasn't been doing much. Oh, it hasn't been doing anything. Rafael, like, because I noticed in the chat they're talking about big Bertha, and it's like. Rafalplik doesn't have Big Bertha. Do they? Oh, they have a half-built one. Ooh. Dimefren calling out. Behemoth coming here, trying to get rid of that Southwest expansion. The Behemoth attack range is not super long. It will get rid of the stuff near Dimefren's base, allowing them to build up a little more on their own. But not a whole lot. That crab is still there? Wow. So the Behemoth will be able to do a decent amount of damage, but it can't do a whole lot besides just get rid of the area immediately adjacent to Dynfrin's current base. It's not going to be able to get into Rafal Pluck's base. Another Behemoth is probably impractical to build. And the Zenith, still on the way. Another minute and a half. Roughly. Looks like it'll be about that much. And... Ooh, those Scorpions have really got to take more advantage of their stealth. They're not getting rid of the Banthas. I mean, the thing is, there's fleas in the way everywhere stopping them from doing anything. Same with Ultimatums. Although, there is a path open. The Ultimatums could go in. They could get rid of these Banthas. They could possibly give Dynefrain back the game. Dynefrain does have a couple nukes. Just anti-nukes are everywhere. That's the problem. And Jasper copying Rafael Pluck's tactic there. Underground anti-nuke under shields. And that's... sheesh. Zenith just about done. Nothing really in here, though. Oh, hey, an Annihilator, which doesn't have enough attack power. It's defense. Strong defense, but Rafael Pluck pretty much just focused on dying for... Not sure why. Jasper's rebuilding. Jasper's got a pretty large army and is not going down anytime soon. I don't know why... I mean, dying for kind of needs to be a bit of a target now, but... Dying for has got enough time. 
We have meteors. Where are they falling to? Seriously, where are they falling to? What are you, what are you targeting, meteor? I don't know where the meteors are. Oh, well. Huh. Not sure if it's targeting anywhere. I don't think it is. It's just piling up meteors. I wonder if the other players are aware of this. Not sure if I can even tell by looking at it. If the other players are aware, and I don't think they are. Hmm. At any rate. Oh, there they go. Right on Rafalplux's base. Does not get rid of the anti-nuke. Or, sorry. Does get rid of the anti-nuke. Doesn't get rid of the nuke. But there's still another anti-nuke there. There's enough anti-nuke power that there's no way this announcer will be able to get in. And another set of meteors being built up. Again, to get rid of Rafalplux's base. But I think at this point, Dying Prince made enough of a mess. Rafalflux probably going to try to push in. The ultimatums will definitely make that difficult, but I think Rafalflux is going to try to push in. Especially not like I think at this point Rafalflux and Jasper are just going to try to break Dynefriend. because Dynefriend's kind of got an uncounterable weapon here. It's slow, but it is effectively uncounterable without shields. That's the only thing. Even then, shields are only so useful. And Dynefriend's attacking from a position of weakness. I mean, they really are. They're they're just threatening for no, like, not sure what they expect. I mean, they obviously expect to break anti-nukes and then hopefully from there open the way for nuke salts. That's evidently what they're trying to do. Oh, wait, Zen's just fired. I missed that. Oh, that's why I could hit Jasper. I wasn't even looking there. Did a bit of a number on Jasper's, Jasper as well. Wow. But yeah, at this point, it's... Oh, boy. Not sure what's up here. Jasper's... Where is Jasper's setup? I'm curious... Where is Jasper's commander? Level 2 commander... Not much there. I'm thinking, yeah, you know, who... Is there a resin going on? Yeah, it looks like Republic has some resurrection abilities. And this is what I mean. There's some... Well, okay, there's a bit of reclaim. Not a huge amount. Compared to what's dying... It's not a big deal. But yeah, is there any other super weapons coming up? Looks like it really is just a meteor. And it's a crab here that's... Or a black dancer. Here, and the meteor controller. Zenith can do what it can, but... Not really a whole lot. Honestly, at this point, the big thing... Ah, another shot into Jasper's base. And that should... Pretty much end it. For Jasper. At least for their economy. The military is still, still okay. They, that detriment is not their military anymore, actually. They have a lot of Banthas. And those Banthas, with their detriment, are still a large chunk of their military. That's most of their military right there. Dime Thrind, really not getting a chance. Nice with the fleas. I like that. Distracting the Banthas. And they only have that single shot attack. Unless Dime Thrind is focusing to make sure that those Banthas are attacking Jasper's Banthas. Dime Thrind's kind of done. Now that Jasper's done before, this game has kind of gone back and forth. But I think Dynafrin at this point is basically done. Dynafrin, however, is the only one with nukes. Oh, no, what? They're not the only one with nukes. No, Rafalplug also... Right, we saw that. Silencer was built up. Rafalplug also has nukes. Everyone with anti-nukes. Whoever loses the anti-nuke first, once again, will lose. Although, to be fair... Oh, no, that, that anti-nuke is still in range. I was thinking... They could nuke the army there, and no, not really, but hey, dying for going for a nuke for the hell of it, just to level off some ground, you know, get some water open up, nothing really major, no real damage. Same time, though, Rafalplug with some real damage to the Banthas, and that's still trying to get the detriment. That detriment has been the centerpiece of this fight. This Everything's been trying to get rid of Jasper's detriment, which is Jasper's main threat. While well, Dying main threat is, of course, the Meteors, the constant threat of Space Rocks, which, of course, threatens us all every day as we go through life, hoping against hope that we don't get completely wiped out. But, time for turning that Primal Fear into just a standard weapon, which seems like a reasonable thing to do. Nice with the EMP missiles, though. Shockley's coming in from the missile silo. Is that all that's being built? Yep, that's it. 
Chocolates and Chocolates alone. Probably gonna try to get that detriment, or at least get the Panthers, get the Spork Forces out of the way. Ideally, though, that detriment would just stop firing. But it looks like the main focus is the support forces. Get rid of everything around the detriment, allow the Banthas to do their damage, and then from there it's just a matter of getting rid of the detriment when nothing else is supporting it. And unfortunately, of course, the anti-nukes do exist. How many anti-nukes are there? There's a lot! There are a great many anti-nukes, and back to Rafal Pluck. Ooh, are they trying to get rid of Rafal Pluck's bandit? Banshee? <laughs> Banthas? Ban is used as a prefix for a lot of units in this game, now that I think about it. I actually haven't considered that before, but it is. Yeah, Jasper's way ahead. Really just a matter of, as soon as, if this anti-nuke were to go down, Jasper wouldn't have any nuke protection. And I think Dimefriend and Rafalplik together do have enough nukes to be able to get rid of Jasper's detriment. If it's inside the main base. Of which there are two? Jasper has two of them? I didn't even notice that. No, 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 never mind. One of them is... Oh, one of them is Diferens. Oh, right. Oh, I guess one of them died. And, of course, Diferens has a bunch of Athenas. Resurrections. All around. Diferens made hope of getting back in the game there. And... Oh, was that... A nuke into the water. So, apparently... Oh, well, we already knew the nukes could kill water. But, yeah. Looks like that was... Dying for death, thing, getting rid of that Northeast Singularity, breaking Jasper's economy completely. Yeah, at this point, that's it. And Dimefren and Rafal look now going against each other. Dimefren with Jasper's old detriment, the only real weapon they have. Dimefren, I gotta say, is doing a pretty good job fighting from a point of weakness. The meteors help a lot because there's no straightforward defense to them. I mean, they're a bit random, but there is no straightforward defense to them. They just wipe out an area, except the protectors. They haven't got rid of that one. That's underground. I mean, in in life, as in this game, the best solution to meteors is digging a hole deep underground and hoping that the giant wave of magma that covers the entire planet upon their impact does not kill you. And we see that works very well for Republic. They still have an anti-nuke, which means, of course, that Dimefront cannot trivially... I should note that trivially being the operative word here, but they can't trivially get rid of or nuke out everything, but really, nukes are no longer useful. There's anti-nuke covering white circle. Anti-nuke covering the entire map. There's basically no way other than meteors for damage to be dealt, and it looks like, is that just constant? Yeah, just constant damage. Diamond is not even bothering us, it looks like they're just shooting straight at the bandages, panthas, trying to get all the damage they can, trying to get rid of all the panthas they can, Tearing apart Republic's forces actually pretty efficiently with those meteors. And I don't... Oh, there we go. I'm thinking, is anyone else going for a super weapon? Yeah, they are. Republic, bit of a last-ditch effort going for a Starlight. Now, for those of you not familiar with the Starlight, or in general with Zero K's endgame weaponry, the Starlight is the I-Win button. Basically, it fires a giant laser, wrecks everything, just auto-targets the most expensive things, targets them, wipes them out, Goes to the next thing, melts that, goes to the next thing, melts that too, wipes out everything. Okay, Dimefriend just pointing out that but ultim ultimatums do not work well against Banthas. Good to know, although I think it... For cost? I guess there'll be five ultimatums is one Bantha, yeah. Okay, fair enough. So I guess Banthas really are just that powerful. I mean, the thing is, the game isn't really well built when it comes to... A zero K... Especially 1v1 does not see this very often. You don't see heavy units like this all that often. You see light units. If a detriment came up in 1v1, that'd be extremely surprising. Banthas are in like one or two 1v1s I've ever seen. Banthas have come up. Dantes are typically the... Or Scorpions are the biggest it goes. And occasionally, very, very rarely, you see a Silencer. You never see like Meteors... Or, ooh, there goes Republic Commander. A bit late in the game. But you never see Meteors, you never see Starlights. Starlight's gonna be another minute or so before it's done, but yeah, you never see those. And more meteors. How many are here? Okay, so it looks like it's just constant meteor barrages onto Rafalplik's base, trying to get rid of as much as possible. Because if Rafalplik gets that starlight, Rafalplik wins. Just straight up. It's in water, it's in a well protected position. Meteors can't easily get it from that angle due to the terraform. It's known. Dimefriend just spotted it. Like, 
Dimefriend knows for sure that there's... Yeah, they know the Starlight's there. They totally know. And of course the detriment in the ground, because the best thing to do against heavy units is, of course, as always, to dig them underground. Protecting them from meteors, because that's just a respectful, kind thing to do. And Silence are coming in here hoping for the best. The Anti-Nuke was stunned out long enough, allowing the Starlight to die. That Starlight goes down thanks to a nuke, thanks to the Anti-Nuke going down, and itself, ironically, being nuked. Having been stunned out, that is basically going to be it for a power plug. Twice, I mean, admittedly, Rafaela came back from the dead before. It's a bit later in the game, they don't have a commander, but still, this is not the first time they have to come out from back, come back from the dead. But Dimefriend, with a massive economic advantage, has managed to rebuild a position. Those meteors, that was a game-winning move. And another nuke in here, just to help get rid of those banthas. Won't kill them, but deal some damage. Yeah, wow, that's that's pretty wrecked area. However, Jasper once again rebuilding. I mean, Jasper has been left alone, and they have the strongest, they have the biggest army by far. Their economy was pretty wrecked. They lost the Singularity reactors, but those have been rebuilt. So Jasper right now once again a threat. Dimefriend doing everything they can to resurrect Jasper's old forces and their own old forces. And nice Dimefriend not letting this go. They know that Jasper's got to be built up by now. I don't know if they have scouting information. Like, I don't think they do. No, they do. No, they got some. They have a bit of radar, a bit of scouting info. So yeah, Dimefriend knows. They know what's up. And of course, all the resurrection. And this is basically it. Thing coming in here. Get that get that detriment out of the ground. Won't be able to move much, mind you, but you know. Get it out of the Oh no, Will. Never mind, it can pass. Yep, alright, well, that was worth a shot. It it helped. It bought Republic some time, which unfortunately that Starlight didn't manage to get built up in time. Would have kind of liked to see that, even though it's, it is the game-winning thing, but it would have been just interesting to see, because it would have probably gone for the Zenith first, breaking Dimefriend's main threat, and then gone for, like, Silencers or something else. Like, you just would have gone for all the big stuff. The Detriment, of course. Dealt with that, no problem. Just caused the whole thing to melt. Jasper, not going to go for that. They don't have the money to do that. Profile did. But Starlight's at, like, 100,000 metal, so, yeah, good luck with that. Oh, 40,000. Never mind. I'm not that expensive. Yeah, 40,000 metal. No. Not with 20 metal per second. You aren't going to get that in any reasonable amount of time. Like that. How long would it be? I'm trying to think. 20. Be 2000. No, it'd be. Yeah, 2000 seconds. So that'd be the better part of 40 minutes. Yeah, that's not happening. Yeah, I realize this has been a two hour long game, but still, that's not happening. And yes, I've been running at double speed most of this game because what choice do I have? Detriment into the into the Zen and Jasper breaking open Dimefront's only real threat. Dimefront, however, does have a fairly large army, but those meteors were their only real way of getting past anti-nukes, which granted are pretty sparse now. Come to think of it. Yeah, there are really no anti-nukes, other than the one that. Well, Dimefront does basically all but one of them. The other one's for foul look, so Jasper could be taken out by it, but that detriment. That detriment just there. Buried into the ground, mind you. Just be slowly chipped away at by urchins. Okay, so that detriment has basically suffered the fate of Prometheus, with urchins in, in place of ravens. Although, admittedly, ravens would do a much more efficient job of it. But yes, that detriment is basically fated to just take damage forever while being stuck in a recreation of Mariana's Trench. Now, Dimefriend, on the other hand, can just nuke out. Everything that Jasper has, there is no anti-nukes in Jasper's side. Revoutplug has one. Dimefriend has three. All over here. And yeah, there we go. That first one... Not sure where it's going to. Follow it. And yep, it's going to Jasper. So Revoutplug, a lot of cloaky bot factories. What? And Jasper losing once again all their energy economy. Yeah, three cloaky bot factories for Revoutplug. Not sure what the idea is, I think they might have gotten a bit paranoid about losing stuff. But yeah, Dimefront looks like they don't really need the Meteor Controller anymore because they're now basically just detrimenting out everything. Taking all of Jasper's investment and turning into their own. Jasper still does have the one detriment, but like I said, it's... it's stuck here, faded forever to be torn apart by urchins. Very slowly. Torn apart and eternally healing. 
But yeah, that's about it. Dynfriend should be able to walk across the map with this detriment handful of Banthas. Jasper can still fight back. Raphael Pluck is... They got nothing. They have absolutely nothing. They have the anti-nuke. That's about it. Oh, that wasn't even done? No, that was done. It's just... No, it's not done! No! It's actually a short, short period of time, which is not really there because that window's no longer there. But yeah, that could have theoretically been done. And that detriment... Did I get rid of the urchins? Must have. Doesn't really matter that that detriment's not going to be able to do too much. And another singularity reactor down. Rafal look losing their energy economy. And also losing a bunch of stuff on the ground, too, because detriments are like that. Except when they fall into a pit of their own making. Detriments got to be careful there. But yeah. Once that's done, once the anti nuke's gone, then we're going to see it. Probably another nuke. Just to finish off Rafal look. Although Jasper really is still a bigger threat. These Banthas are a large threat. Though, I think a nuke. A nuke could get rid of two of them. Or just about get rid of two of them. Okay, now we get rid of two of them. But yeah, at this point, Rafael looks basically going to be bowled over. Jasper's going to be bowled over as soon as Dynfriend puts any real effort into it. And I think that's the real effort. We have a nuke coming in. Jasper with no anti-nuke to deal with this. And the Bantha's very low on health. One of them is going to die immediately. Ooh. Actually, is it? Okay, there's the shot. What the heck? That was the nuke, huh? I guess the effect got messed up underwater. Oh, and the detriment getting out of there? That detriment's being really unpredictable sometimes. It's managing to deal some damage from time to time and just completely wrecked face, but not really able to do a whole lot. Still, that must have been painful. Granted, Dimefront has so many singularity reactors, what do they care? They've got this game in the bag. But I still find that kind of funny. What are they doing? Oh, we're probably going to resurrect the Singularity Reactor. Or... Nope. Oh, digging an even bigger pit. Okay, that is really tricky. Detriments... What is the detriment firing rules? I realize they're amphibious, but... Sheesh. Okay, that's been... Di that, that's... Wow, that's bugging out. It's under the map. Yep. That detriment just being put down there. Being put in as deep a trench as possible. <laughs> Sheesh. I was joking about the Marianas Trench thing before, but not anymore. That's serious. And Dimefron takes the game. Coming back from a very near loss. Holy crap, that went around. Definitely needed to speed that up. Still an hour and a half, wow. Hope you guys enjoyed that. But yeah. Oh, and Dimefron pointing out that a self-destruct on that on the detriment that was in here would have destroyed pretty much everything around with the nuke and the singularity reactor and everything. Dying still would have had the game though. But yeah, looking at the income, it's like Rafael Pluck nearly dies and then slowly rebuilds as Jasper's okay. Jasper's pretty stable throughout the game, come to think of it. Rafael Pluck die nearly dies. Then Dynefriend nearly dies. Because Jasper manages to crack open Rafael Pluck, nukes them. Dynefriend just takes a lot of damage. Doesn't like oh, they got nuked. Yeah, they lost their they lost theirs. They got nuked a few minutes later. It was like 10, 15 minutes later. And then Jasper, pretty much stable. And then Dimefriend manages to take out a bunch of their forces. Jasper really died to attrition, though. Very little straight, massive damage. Like, you can see when the nuke happened to Rafael. Like, you can see when the nuke happened to Dimefriend. There, I mean, there's a drop of the detriment dying, but there's not really, like, nuke happened to Jasper. I do see, however, kind of big drops off when Meteor Controller comes up and Dimefriend takes the game. Holy crap. How much metal was... Okay. These are probably not that big numbers for FFA, but in general, yeah. Wow, okay, Dynfriend way ahead in economy the whole time. Actually, come to think of it, metal used. Okay, Jasper had a nice advantage for a third of the game, so about 40 minutes. But yeah, Dynfriend and Rafael Plug relatively even throughout. So Jasper just never really managed to turn their win, their short, small wins into big wins. And I think a large part of that was that they didn't break Rafael Plug completely over here. They didn't wipe out everything to the southwest, and that meant they just couldn't break them. Like, Brad Jasper just couldn't break Rafael Bluck. And with Dimefront, on the other hand, Dimefront had so many assets in the water, now a lot of them did die. We did see all the Singularity Reactors die. But, Dimefront still had some stuff over here they could work with. They still had a few, few things over to the north. So Jasper damaged, them he damaged their opponents heavily, but didn't really kill them. Didn't follow up for either one. I think if they had followed up with either one or fired just one more nuke, 
I think the nukes that were fired for Republic, that third one was a waste. Probably should have been saved to get rid of Dying Threat, or more efficiently get rid of Dying Threat, or saved, scout out, see, oh hey, there's another anti nuke here, break that, then smash Republic, then come in with a handful of, I think, one or two Banthas at that point, maybe, I think, not even then, I don't think. But yeah, come in with a handful of units, just wipe out the rest of it, clean up Republic. Dying Threat's already kind of, Dying Threat gets broken very shortly after, so that would have easily taken care of Dying Threat. Jasper would have won within 40 minutes. But instead, Jasper didn't quite manage to break through and just ended up staying pretty stable while Dimefriend was able to rebuild and then Rafalplik able to rebuild. Jasper never managed to kill anybody and that ended up being their downfall. So yeah, that was that. Hope you enjoyed that because, boy, was that long and that's the only game I'm going to be doing tonight because that, I knew, was going to be a couple hours long. So yeah, thanks for watching and have a good night, everybody.